I'm sure we all remember our childhood friends, but what about your first best friend? It is an amazing feeling to meet someone that you just click with so well. You just want to hang out with them all the time. They get you, and you get them. You can tell them anything. While it can be normal to be a little obsessed with a friend, what happens when that is taken too far? The case we're going to get into is about two teenage girls that were best friends that ended up committing murder. Welcome to our channel, where we talk all things true crime. This video is for educational purposes based on public knowledge. Let's get started. Pauline Parker was born on May 26, 1938, and Julia Hulm was born on October 28, 1938. The two girls became friends in their early teens. Pauline's parents worked as house staff and gardeners at the University of Canterbury. Juliet's father was a physicist who was a senior official at the university. Both girls went to Christ Church High School and both were suffering from illnesses. Pauline had osteomyelitis, an infection of the bone, and Juliet had tuberculosis. This was the initial connection for the girls. As Pauline and Juliet's friendship developed, they invented an elaborate fantasy life together. They wrote stories, books, and plays that centered around this fantasy world. Their friendship became so intense that their parents were concerned that the girls' friendship had turned into more. The parents still allowed the girls to see each other, though. Pauline would often spend the nights at Juliet's and go on vacations with the Helms. Whenever Pauline would go back home, Juliet would become withdrawn and ill. During the girls' relationship, they rejected Christianity and came up with their own religion that had their own morality and ideas. They would worship their own saints and imagine a parallel dimension they called the fourth world. This was their version of heaven. The girls felt like they already had access to the fourth world during moments of spiritual enlightenment. Pauline said they were able to achieve this spiritual enlightenment because of their friendship. In May 1953, Pauline wasn't invited to Juliet's first summer break. Juliet was hospitalized again due to her TB. During this time, the girls wrote each other letters at a fast pace. Their letters included vivid and fantastical writings where they would assume different characters and play out storylines. After 112 days, Juliet was deemed well enough to go home. Pauline and Juliet's friendship continued with the same intensity as before. The girls were faced with more emotional turmoil when the Helms announced that they were moving to the UK due to the end of their marriage. Juliet's mother was having an affair and her father had resigned from his job. Initially, Juliet was going to be going to London with her father. The girls relentlessly campaigned for Pauline to move with Juliet. Pauline's mother's response, unsurprisingly, was an unyielding no. Due to Juliet's health, it was decided she would be sent to live with family in South Africa. This didn't change the girls' mind. They still asked their parents repeatedly for Pauline to move with Juliet. Pauline's mother continued to say no to their pleas. This is when the girls formed their unimaginable plan to eliminate the perceived obstacle so they could remain together. The girls thought by killing Pauline's mother would solve their problem. Their long-term plan was for both of them to go to South Africa and then head to either New York City or Hollywood to publish their writing and work in film. This horrible plan was set in motion on June 22, 1954. Pauline and Juliet was having an afternoon tea with Pauline's mother. Following the tea, the ladies went for a walk on the trail through the wooded area. Once they were far enough on the path, the girls leaped into action and began beating Pauline's mother to death with a brick and a stocking. Once Pauline's mother was dead, the girls ran back down the trail to the tea kiosk. They encountered the owners of the tea shop, Agnes and Kenneth, where they said that Pauline's mother fell and hit her head. Once the police arrived, both girls were picked up by Juliet's father and he took the girls back to his house. The girls were bathed, fed, and given a sedative to help them sleep. Pauline's mother, Honora's body was found in Victoria Park. There were numerous lacerations to her face, neck, and head. The police soon found the murder weapon in the woods. It was very clear this was no accident. The detectives interviewed both girls. At first, they both had the same story. Honora had fallen and hit her head repeatedly on a rock. The girl's story quickly fell apart. Juliet's family prompted her to state that she hadn't actually seen what happened because she had been walking ahead. The detectives then told Pauline that they had reason that she was responsible for killing her mother and her friend wasn't there when it happened. Pauline then confessed to killing her mother by herself. She had decided to do it a few days ago and had hit the woman, in her words, a good many times around the head with a brick. Pauline stated that Juliet had nothing to do with the killing 
and didn't see her strike her mother. Pauline did say, as soon as I started to strike my mother, I regretted it, but I could not stop then. Pauline was then taken to the police station and charged with murder. While in custody, the police noticed Pauline writing furiously on a piece of paper. This turned out to be a diary entry to record what had taken place on June 22nd. On the paper, Pauline had written, I haven't had a chance to talk to Deborah properly, which was her nickname for Juliet, but I am taking the blame for everything. This then prompted the police to seize her diaries from her home. The most recent entries were shocking. From the diary entries, it was clear to the police that Juliet was just as responsible as Pauline. The police went back to Juliet's house to question her some more. By the end of the day, Juliet confessed. She'd said, I had part of a brick. I had gotten it from the garage. I gave it to Pauline. The brick was then put in a stocking at her house. Juliet appeared in court the next day being charged with murder. During the trial, it was revealed that Pauline's parents were not actually married. They had just been living fictitiously with the last name of Parker. During the trial, both Honora and Pauline was referred to as the surname of Parker. The trial was heavily sensationalized by the public. There were speculations of the girls being in a relationship with each other and that they suffered from insanity. In the end, the girls were found guilty of murder. The girls were considered too young for the death penalty, so they both only spent five years in prison. There are some sources that said one of their release conditions was that they were never to contact each other again. There's no proof that that is true. Once released, Juliet went to Italy to live with her father. She did spend time in both the U.S. and England, later settling in Scotland. She became a successful novelist under the name Anne Perry. In 1968, she became a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Not much is known about Juliet's life after prison. She did make a statement in 2006 that while her friendship with Pauline was obsessive, they were not romantically involved. Juliet died at the age of 84 on April 10, 2023. Pauline had six months of parole in New Zealand, and after that ended, she left the country. She changed her name to Hilary Nathan and moved to England. She lived in a small village and ran a children's writing school. She too turned to religion as an adult, becoming a devout Roman Catholic. Pauline has never spoken to the press about the murder. In 1996, she released a statement through her sister expressing her remorse for killing her mother. Her sister also added that Pauline had committed the most terrible crime and has spent 40 years repaying it by keeping away from people and doing her own little thing. After it happened, she was very sorry about it. It took her about five years to realize what she had done. What do you think about today's case? Have you ever had any intense friendships? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you.